Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the third day of our Igluna virtual field campaign. Today, we start with a project show from the team SWAG from the Zurich University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. They will tell you about their idea of a plant vending machine. Please don't forget to submit your questions and comments in our YouTube chat. The students will address them after the presentation. Thank you for joining, and welcome, team SWAG. Hello, and good morning to the SWAG for participation. <laughs> My name is Philip Oswal, and we are streaming right now live, live from Alpnach, here from Luzern. Um, by my side is... I'm the co-leader from Team Swag, and um, I'm responsible for the lights and the plant education. We want to present you our developed system, like the Swag system. Swag is Smart Waste Based Agriculture Growing System. And what is our why? And why we built this system, you will see it right now. Welcome back to the SWAG project show. Let me introduce you a little bit more about our system. So, first of all, go right now on strawpoll.me and type in the number 20566692 and decide which of these SWAG topics we will explain a little bit more in detail. So right now, go to strawpoll.me 20566692 and choose one of these topics. Let me explain a little bit more about the SWAG system. So first of all, we have a closed plant cultivating system. It has integrated a circular hydroponic system. We have integrated fully adjustable lights for a, a healthy plant growth. Also a climate connect controlled environment. So also there are some sensor meshes with microcontrollers and a smart control. All of the core functions will be remote and controllable. During the last nine months, we had a lot of different kinds of steps. So here is the swag solution. And we came up with just one last system. Let me introduce you, just as a Gluna premiere, the Swag X Fink prototype Swag system. So, where we are? We are right now streaming live from Arovis in Alpnach. If we look out the window, we see Mount Pilatus. The setups for the system is a diameter of 1.2 wide, 1 depth, and 2.10 high. The full system has a, a weight of 400 kg. The energy max is 3 kilowatt. We have a water tank inside, the volume is 45 liters. We have a heat release of 500 watts. Let me introduce you to the crew. So myself is Philip Osterwalder. By my side, Ray Moberholzer, I'm co-leader. All the way, we have Edmund Peritatz for the marketing and communication, the Stefan Schmutz on the streaming right now, and he's responsible for the plants. We have Sarah Blinkenstoffer, who is for communication and the campaign management. And we have Samuel Beer, controlling network, Michael Blinkenstorfer for project management and system engineering, Lukas Bernhardt, system design, 
and Mike Magdala for front end developer. This is our board from the Zurich University of Applied Science. We have different kind of, of, of different kind of process and lectures for different inter, intercultural of the different topics that we use and integrate of the technologies inside the system. So go a little bit more in detail for the system subsystems. Mm -hmm. Please, let's see, start with botanic. Let's see what's inside. We have a current setup with three levels. On each level, there can be different kind of flow channels, amount of flow channels. On the highest level, there will be four flow channels. On the middle, three, and on the bottom, also three. We have on each level two LED modules. We can put inside, we have two different sizes, six or 10 plants per full channel. So we have at least on each, on each system or each on level, plants per level, like 40, 30, and 80 plants. That's all together an amount of 88 different kinds of plants. How does it work with the plants? So first of all, we take the seeds, we put them in a substrate. We are doing some tests. We, we, we are will doing some tests like substrates in rock wool and in uh, hydrocorals and put these inside the pots and just easy to use inside the hydroponic system. So how does it look like with the hydroponic system? There will be different kinds of flow channels. So there are different kinds of schematics on, on the top. So we can choose if there are big plants for like six plants inside, like salad, they grow a little bit more with space. Or we have a 30, 13 flow channel, there can put some inside smaller plants. So let's go to the hydroponic. How does the setup works? So on the three different kinds of levels, there are all the hydroponic channels, like the flow channels, they are connected in a cascade flow. We pump it from the bottom to the top level, and then it flows like through gravity down to the water tank again. Okay, so go, going to the lights. I'm responsible for the lights, and I developed smart grow lights from Aurora. And they are quite uh, innovative. There's a quite innovative design, but I will go into further details if you if you bought it on Spropolmi for the Aurora lights. Um, here you can see um, how the plan, how the light a bit works. So the light itself is fully dimmable. It can perform a full day sun course from the morning rising sun um, to the midday with lots of UV inside and to the golden sunset. It can perform um, different climate zones, various high profiles and weather simulations, all depending where the plant naturally lives in. So for example, here, I have a, a vanilla planifolia. It's a vanilla plant, if you can see it here. And this plant um, um, is naturally growing in a tropical forest. So it needs um, less direct sunlight, even not direct sunlight, but more of the bluish content. And here is a um, tobacco plant. This one needs a lot of direct sunlight, and the more UV you put inside, the more nicotina content is um, putting in <clears throat> into the leaves. So, um, if, with my lamp, the lamp is capable of having a perfect light for every plant. So, here you can see the here you can see different um, lamp profiles. So, uh, on the bottom right, I have vapor lamp, sodium pressure lamps, and um, Normal tube lamps, they have all of the spectra. But I have a fully changeable spectra. So whatever I want, I can do and perform. And everything is highly efficient. So um, the spectra mix from, from the Sunday course, hey, the spectra mix is looked up from a full Dante course. So I performed here on the 3D plot um, full sunlight course. And as you can see here, the bluish content rises way more um, um, to the midday than a red content, for example. So that's all dependent on um, how much air, um, air mass it has to go through the light. Yeah. So 
let's go to a little bit more in details to the structure. We have aluminum profiles, standard aluminum profiles on the corners and have the flow channels hang up with some um, metal rings. So on the cover, we use plexiglass and on the bottom, there will be a textile. Why? The milky plexiglass will be cover the plants from reflecting light from outside and keeps all the artificial lights from inside from Aurora and, and keeps it there reflected inside. Textile is a, is a nice in detail to make it more comfortable and look it more cozy like you have it in your living room. It makes it more like a cupboard or like a vitrine, like an aquarium or a plantarium. We have made the setup and the construction like modularity. So there's possibility of four levels and even put inside more levels, more, more flow channels on each level. There could be at least more plants inside and different kinds of crops with the special wavelength and the, the special spectrum for each plant. The whole system can be controlled by a dashboard and, and showed by a dashboard. So here you can see the first draft of our dashboard, which, which shows the temperature, for example, the CO2 level, the humidity, or on the bottom, the nutrition data, which will be from the fertilizer inside. Also, there will be um, a status of the water tank and the volume. Also, the light mix from uh, the different kind of levels in the system. On this point, we want to say a big thank you to all our partners who make that possible to develop and construct this system here at Aurovis in Altmach. Also, a big thanks to our sponsors, which provide us materials or manpower to get this system real life. Why we do this system and why we work together for the last nine months so hard for that? Because we want to grow food everywhere and beyond. It's just that easy. And we want to do that everybody can be just a farmer. If it's be at home or even in the industrial kitchen or even beyond on moon or further on to Mars. This was our core presentation right now till this point. So let's see which topic do the, the viewers choose to go a little bit more in detail. And I think, what do you think? You're All smiling. Right. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm, it's a pleasure for me to explain it a little bit more. <laughs> So, Aurora wins with 35%. So let's go a little bit more in detail to Aurora Lights. All right, so that's my lamp here. And, and the very speciality from this lamp is, first of all, it's very efficient. It uses the latest technology of LED, um, of LED components. It uses, uh, first of all, um, LM301Bs. Uh, it, it, it's a PVM module, a PVM dimming. So, and um, the system here, it's, with, it's powered with a little microcontroller. The microcontroller, um, um, the microcontroller mixes um, the daylight um, in order to get perfect sunlight. So the performance here is, we have an efficiency up to um, 95%. And um, the biggest loss we have is on this huge um, PSU here. So yeah, that's like 4% of our whole loss. We have a illuminance of 78,000 lux. And that's not really proper we, for the plant applications. We're using PPF par, um, but we have also a very good um, PPFD content. Um, so this lamp is capable of performing a spectra from UVC um, to infrared nanohundred nanometers. So there is a lot of things um, and to, to be discovered. For example, UVC, um, there is a thinking that we could, with short bursts of UVC light, um, we could treat fungi um, on, the, on the leaf surface. Uh, for example, the male tau, I don't know how it's called in English, 
um, and not destroy the plant itself. So that we need less um, a fungicide and, and treat it like, yeah, just with light. So with UVA, for example, you can you can get you can receive you can get slower growth and thicker trunks of the plant. With a lot of bluish content and red content, you can accelerate the photosynthetic photosynthetic rate. And with near and infrared, um, you can also um, you can also make profit of the Emerson effect. The Emerson effect is stating um, that with infrared and near infrared, the plant can even perform more photosynthetic rate than it usually does. So that's all because of the morning sunrise and the evening sunset. The, if in between the sun is too hot, the temperature is too hot, the plant cannot get, um, and ca the plant cannot perform photosynthetic, uh, cannot, cannot perform photosynthetic rates. So with this infrared and near infrared, the plant um, does it more in the morning and in the afternoon so that it's that it can even um, grow in arid and hotter climates. So yeah, go further. And here on the left side, you can see a Gravita Pro. And Gravita Pro is hanging up there. It's not on right now, but um, in the more in the in the normal agricultural applications nowadays, still in Switzerland, you're using still the Gravita Pro, the sodium pressure lamps. And we thought it's very efficient, but it isn't, in fact. And you can see here why. The most of the sunlight, uh, most of the light it um, emits is on the green content and on the orange. But as we know, the blue and the red content is the content the plant uses the most. So with this LED here, we can, we can, really, we can really interact and put in the, the real spectra every plant needs and every special plant needs. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Very nice, very full lamp. So the next step will be a live cam, which, so first of all, have you back. And now we will change to the live stream to see our current status of the system. So we will change that, go to our cam. And now we switch to the live stream. Okay. okay. All right. So that's me on the screen here. <laughs> okay. Now Philip is going to the system. Um, the system is still on the construction, as you can see here. Um, it, it will be finished on Monday, I guess. So we are working really hard. So on the very right side, you can see Sarah. Um, she is um, already putting the Hux sensors inside. We have Hux sensor for measuring the nutrient content, the pH level, EC level, and everything it really needs. So all the sensor data from there goes up to the cloud and into a screen um, from the, on the dashboard, as you can see in the middle here. So on the screen here, yeah, right now is Michael um, installing it, I can see it. So this, on this, everything is displayed afterwards on the screen. And on the screen, there is another one. There is a an, um, button you can then click and you can say, okay, let's grow something. And if you want to, I can, ah, yeah, I can see Etme is putting um, basil inside. So you can put a, a button and say, okay, let's, let's go basil here. And the lamp will have the perfect light spectra for the basil. Oh, Etme is tasting it. Ooh, it must smell delicious because with more of the UV content, the basil smells way better. Trust me. So yeah, they're all working hard. Even uh, um, Samuel is um, working very hard. They're discussing it. And I think, yeah, it looks like that he will be nearly finished soon. So do you wanna, do you wanna have also a look to our streamer? So over here, you can see our streaming specialist, um, Samuel uh, Stefan Schmutz. He's very busy right now, so we shouldn't distract him too much. But um, he's doing a great job so far, and we are very proud of all our members. They are really giving their best, trying their best um, to have everything finished on Monday. And even he is trying the best to give us 
on the on the brightest lights so that we are all getting to be shooting stars. Yeah. So come on, take a seat, Philip. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for um, showing them the our system. So let's change the camera again. Welcome back. Thank you very much. So that was our presentation for the SWAG system. You meet the crew, mostly of all of the team members. You saw our current status. How does it work like? Um, we will be finished planning next week to try this prototype and do the first tests uh, with the plants inside and the hydroponics and all the electrical stuff. And follow us on Twitch, on, on, on Instagram, on YouTube and show I have a look on our how our system grows so it's quite amazing and trust me we will see us at the Q&A and now you see our live stream on Twitch have fun welcome back thank you very much so that was our presentation for the swag system you meet the crew of the team members you saw our current status how does it work like? Um, we will be finished planning next week to try this prototype and do the first test. Thank you very much, Team Swag, for your interesting presentation and for the possibility to have a look behind the scenes with your live stream. And I see the audience is really interested to know more about your project, and we have a lot of questions in our YouTube chat. So let's start with the questions. Um, how do you think the public would react to seeing your system? Do you think the world is ready to welcome this very innovative system and implement it in our daily lives? This is a very nice question. It's uh, right now at this current status of the system very hard to, um, to explain because the size of the system is not very commercial. Um, there is a big problem about scaling. So, but it could be possible if it works more efficient and it, if we try or if we can get to grow even more plants, exotic plants, very kind of crops inside, healthy, tasty plants inside the system, there is a chance that we can um, sell the system. It depends uh, right now on the price. Otherwise, right now it's too expensive at all. <laughs> It makes no sense to sell it, and it has to be consumer friendly. Um, for the design, we we thought to make it like look more to do it or build it inside um, a living room, like you put it next to the TV or right into the kitchen where your fridge is, um, to 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 build it right inside a habitat, even on moon, and uh, it looks nice and it works nice. And I hope the, the viewers and the public will love the design as well. <laughs> and I mean, the lamps are ready. So there is just a system to put on, um, outside onto the lamps. So yeah. <laughs> Indeed, thank you very much. I see the public is, is really interested to buy your system. I have a second related question. Is your technology expensive? Can you give a price range? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty hard to say. So. Uh, we, we have some sponsors and we had a crowdfunding campaign in uh, March and we raised 15,000 15, Swiss francs and they're all gone <laughs> for all the, all the structure and the design and the different kind of materials that we use. Um, right now the prototype like it is here is around 100k but we think we can mention the price for that? Yeah, I mean, like, there is a lot of um, things we had to put inside and we did wrong and so, but I guess the price range right now would be like around 30, 35K, yeah. Too much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, somebody is asking, how is your project better than the already existing technologies? Can you tell us about it? So we use the NFT system for the hydroponic it's just another innovation um, that there are already a proof of concept that it works with the uh, grow plants inside. 
the new technology is the light, of course. And, yeah, because when you have lights that make the, the plants fresher and healthier and even smell better, as you could see, all right. So that's quite an innovation, I guess. And we want to provide a closed system which control the whole growing process of the plants. So we designed it as simple as possible to control it as simple as possible and to replace some parts. If there are anything broken, you can do it by yourself at least. And we have two, it's semi-automatic. We have two steps that you have to do by yourself. So the step one will be planting by yourself inside what you want to grow and eat at least. And the second, second manual step will be the, you will put out the plants and you don't have to wash it, just eat it directly. But it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of the, on, on the plants, I think I have a couple of questions related to that. Um, do you sterilize seeds to reduce contamination before sowing? No, question. Can, can, you can you repeat it? Sorry for that. Sure. Do you sterilize seeds to reduce contamination before sowing? Can you sterilize it? Yeah. Um, right now, for the earth application, um, we are not sterilizing it. But for the moon missions, of course, we have to do something. Otherwise, we have like huge problems. I see, and I have a related question. Are you using any methods for fighting against parasites, harmful insects, if they arrive? Um, right now, it's, we're not using it because we are not needing it. <laughs> but um, on the lands, there are UVC contents inside. So with further tests, we are pretty, we are pretty sure and that we can um, fight against insects and fungi and every other treat. But um, yeah, there is, for every, plant applications on the moon, there are some things need, um, there are some things you, you have to have in order to have um, fresh and healthy food and not having, having it killed right before it's harvested. And do you, do you have to use some pesticides or are your vegetables 100% organic? Right now? We don't use any pesticide. We just test or we'll test the system, system next week with the conventional fertilizer. There will be no sprays, no herbicides, no pesticides, nothing else. It will be fully biological, uh, bi biological. So uh, you can grow it and put it outside the system and eat it directly. Thank you very much for the answer. And uh, could you remind us um, about which varieties of plants are you cultivating or you're planning to cultivate inside your prototype? Thanks for that question. Variety of plants. So yeah, we have quite a lot of <laughs> varieties, of course. Um, we plan to have rice on the lowest part of the channels. Um, we have like dragon fruits as a part of the very special plants. And then we have salads, um, like microgreens. We're using uh, fennel. We're using, yeah, you can see here the vanilla planifolia, which grows like as a vine. Um, through the system and on the whole system here. We plan to grow tobacco, a smaller variety of tobacco. And like here for the other for the other um, group, there is a group which wants to have coffee on the moon. <laughs> so we decided to grow some coffee arabica on the moon. And with a nice collaboration with them, we can get the best coffee you ever tasted. Space coffee. Thank you. This is very nice of you. It's great to see collaboration between Igluna teams. So, and a great variety of plants indeed. So I had one question from the audience, but I, I guess we can uh, say that you already answered the, the question was, what if the astronauts get tired of eating the same plants for a long time? But I suppose with uh, such a great variety of plants that you just mentioned, that should not be a problem for the astronauts. Exactly. So let's have a look at other questions. Um, what should be, in your opinion, the most optimized plant distribution for your system and why? So, sorry? Uh, what should you be, in again? your opinion, the most optimized plant distribution for your system and why? Plant distribution. Yeah. I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Can you, can you rephrase it? 
Well, that is not my question, so I can rephrase <laughs> it, but it I assume it's probably also about the, the variety of plants, maybe different plants levels that you different. have in your system. How would you decide which plants you grow? I assume. Ah, okay. I know. Okay. Yeah, I try right. to. Um, if, if that was a question, we try at least, if the prototype is, is built, to get um, a, a full, healthy diet to grow as much like vitamins inside the system with, with, with the plants that we grow to provide a healthy living for the astronauts. So the food that astronauts have right now is uh, not really fresh, not really tasty and doesn't look very yummy. Um, that's why we go with this like kind of wedgie vending machine um, that you can see the plants growing inside and get a, like a connectivity between humans and plants. This, this is a very important part because if you are an external planet um, like Moon or Mars, you don't have that connectivity between such animals, humans or plants. And even on, on such an environment, extreme environment, you could be after a couple of months or years, you just start to missing the sound of rain. And this is like the same the connectivity between humans and plants. And we decide to go ahead with some tests to provide as much nutrition for a healthy body functions as possible with some different kind of crops. And imagine if you're after a, after a long moonwalk, what is better than have a fresh veggie and fresh meal? There is nothing better, trust me. A smoothie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I trust you. So we had a very nice discussion about plants. Now let's talk a little bit about more technical part of the system. Um, your, your sensors, could you tell us more about how, um, what exactly are you measuring with the sensors? What kind of sensors you have? Okay, so we're measuring the NPK level. We're measuring the pH level, the EC level, so the electrical conductivity. Uh, we have also ammonia sensors. We have O2 sensors in the water. And so all, everything for the water here. And then we have humidity sensors and um, uh, humidity and CO2 level sensors on e each level in the growth chamber. Then we have um, a sensor and CO2 sensor and an O2 sensor on the exhaust fan and um, um, air management. And then we have um, temperature control systems each level as well. Very good. Thank you very much for your explanation. Now talking about the future and uh, one day seeing your system on the moon, um, how do you plan to adapt it and how would you achieve gravity flow under the microgravity conditions? This is a really good question. So um, first of all, uh, that size is not really big. So we mentioned before, it's uh, like uh, a cupboard or a cupboard for clothes. It's not that big or like a fridge. Um, it's easy to, to, to handle that, to bring it up uh, on, a, on a lunar base or even to, to Mars. Um, it is right now built for gravity. Of course, for the cascade flow, we need some gravity that the water can flow down. We have some plans to adapt it to a microgravity, like um, to change from NFT hydroponic to a phoponic system, like it's used already in, uh, in space. We have some plans, but we didn't build it right now because we have decided to build up first a proof of concept of this prototype and then rebuild it or go ahead and develop it furthermore. At this point, we want to say a big shout out to Fink about design, who work and collaborate with us to get this design, this design like it is right now out of this system. Uh, thank you very much to Fink. Thank you very much. And I have one more related question, I guess. Is there a potential to make the system vacuum compatible to allow for use on the lunar surface? Yeah, there is, of course. But we should uh, exchange the... We have right now not glass um, as, a, as a covering system. We just have plexiglass, and that's, that's not strong enough. <laughs> and, but with the aluminium construction we have, it, there is a possibility. There is just a small thing like with the air inlet and outlet, but this is for sure uh, makeable. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Now that you mentioned air inlet, I have a question from the audience asking, uh, are you filtering air? Yeah. Right now, we are not filtering the air, which goes inside the systems. We are just checking the quality of the air. But um, with um, you can set it up with a, um, with a carbon filter. You can set it up um, with even with um, UVC treat, um, treatments so that it's really um, without any fungus and, 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 and bacteria and stuff. Yeah. I, I can add to this that we don't filter air, we filter water. So we can use wastewater at least, or uh, even uh, tap water and make it like osmosa to get a fully calibration of the system. So we get a conductivity of around less than 10. Yeah, yeah that's right. less, less than 10. Uh, to make a calibration and to add the exact amount of fertilizer into the water tank to provide the, the right nutrition for nutrition levels and for, for the plants. So uh, we have a, a smoother filter from Ubuntu inside the system. Thank you very much for your answer. And um, now that we are on this topic, I also have a question from the audience asking what nutrient solution do you use? Okay. <laughs> so right now we're not using a, a self-made nutrient solution. Um, we have one of our sponsor we're using. It's um, it's one of his main thing. Um, he's right producing. It's from Holos. Um, he's doing it on his own. He has. I mean, like he has a company doing it, but um, his own brand. Yeah, exactly. And we're using it and this way because it's cheaper for us. We had we haven't. Have, we haven't had to pay for this, but um, we plan really to have NPK um, fertilizers to mix, on, to mix it on our own because we are already capable of measuring every substance inside, every nutrition part of, of, the, uh, of the nutrition level itself. So we are actually right now already capable of, but we have a lot of other things to do. So that's a, just the next step. Indeed. And um, another question from the audience, how do you control algal blooms? So yeah, we are okay. using conventional fertilizer, not um, biological fertilizer. So there is less on the on the beginning. There is less algal bloom. Um, there is a potential um, to use UVC treatment in the water, as you as you already have it in pond systems to clear the water and to really sterilize it. But as we already explained, we haven't um, we have not used everything anything of that. But we, we're, we're really trying to get the light out of the water thing. So we're using black, black tubes. We are really sealing everything so that it stays away from the light of the water. Thank you very much for your detailed answers. So now we have learned more about uh, the details of your system. But I see the audience is, is also really curious about the project itself. So somebody from the audience is asking, uh, where is this work right now? Is it a startup university project or more business? or just a uh, research-oriented idea at the moment? Right now, we are just a student's project. Uh, we are built this up with uh, students and some, uh, some team members who are workers, are not, not from the University of Applied Science. So we are a team from around 10. And the idea is to develop this system further on. So we, we see a lot of potential, not only in this system, just in vertical farming around Switzerland. And we want to provide this system to as much people as possible. For that, we have to raise more money and we have to, to make a startup out of this. And uh, there was an idea to go or to plan at least a Kickstarter in winter <laughs> as a sneak peek. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, I have one last question. Why should your system be ready exactly on Monday and not already today? Yeah, because it was my <laughs> promise. Um, I had a small delay with the lights, and uh, but it's fixed right now. So I'm I was really hard working to have a lamp <laughs> put up on the system, and I really I I, I am really finished um, Sunday evening, and then there is just the the thing to put all the channels inside again after I finished, and to put the all the ceilings down and then yeah i promise you it will be finished on monday not another I, day i can add to this so uh, we had a lot of problems 
uh, not, not only about uh, COVID-19, just uh, with the delivery of some parts that, that had some issues. There was uh, partly broken and uh, false manufacturer with uh, different kind of sizes. We couldn't use that to build it, uh, to, to put it inside the system. And um, like Raymond mentioned before, we get, uh, got the last parts yesterday, um, express the overnight delivery to, to use it in the system. And uh, there are a lot of other <laughs> issues that we had to, to get such a different kind of, like uh, the flow channel caps are made out of this multi-jet fusion, is a special kind of 3D printing. And um, there was also pretty hard to find a company which provides such material like uh, with this uh, physic uh, pro property. Yeah, properties, yeah. I see. I guess the audience was guessing whether it was done on purpose so that you can have a chance to show the life work, but now <laughs> we know the truth. <laughs> so thank you very much. That was our last question from our YouTube chat. Thanks everyone for submitting the questions. That was a very interesting, very detailed discussion about learning more about your SWAG project. With that, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you again, the SWAG team, for this very nice presentation. Thank you everyone for watching us and uh, hopefully see you again in one hour for our next project show. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, you bye. too. Join us. Big shout out. See you. Bye bye.